I'm Charlotte and I'm a fashion historian and today's video I want to do another person and go look into another person and their personal fashion journey and how they impacted on fashion of their era. So today's person as you probably know from the title is Queen Victoria and this will be quite similar to my Mary Antoinette video and I hope in the future to do more videos similar to these two that I will bring up a woman from history and go through her personal fashion journey and see how they impacted on fashion and I think this these kind of videos are actually quite interesting because female rulers they tend to have quite an effect on fashion and women on public eye, they do affect quite a lot on fashion. And do comment if you have some person that you want me to make a video about, like their fashion journey. And queens, and especially ruling queens, they do have a lot of power. And people do really notice what they wear and how they dress. And that's quite a big part of who you are. because. How you dress is how you express yourself. And also ruling queens, they do define what is acceptable to wear and what is not acceptable to wear. As a royalty, people do look up to them and their fashions and their, their fashions are copied and people want to dress like them because people want to be like them. For this video, I actually read Lucy Worsley's biography of Queen Victoria, which is called Queen Victoria, Daughter, Wife, Mother, Widow. And I really highly recommend that book. It, it was really good. Like, I like how Lucy Worsley writes. So let's start with Victoria's childhood. There are several portraits of Queen Victoria as a child, but Children's clothing is very hard to analyze because children don't really buy their own clothes, they don't choose their own clothes. Uh, you can see children's clothing as self-expression because it's not really them dressing themselves up until their teenage years. And there's actually one dress from Victoria's teenage years that I want to talk about. And it's her tartan dress. I really love this dress, I actually recreated it in my own way. So according to Lucy Worsley's biography, Queen Victoria loved tartan dresses when she was a teenager and obviously in the later years as well because you can see her dressing up in tartan and she dressing her children in tartan. And Worsley compares Queen Victoria wearing these dark tartan dresses, these dark tartan dresses as kind of having a emo face, if you know. <laughs> and this particular tartan dress Victoria wore when she was from 16 years to 18 years old. So this is like her teenage years dress. And she was really fascinated with Scotland and even though as a teenager she had never been there, but she idolized the idea of Scotland and she loved the tartan fashions. The dress itself, itself is very typical 1830s style dress with the scoop neckline and puffy sleeves. And it has a lot of decorations it, and it is made from velvet and it is this beautiful, beautiful dress. And actually Dartan dresses became really fashionable during Victorian era, even with the people who weren't from Scotland. So this actually affected on fashion a little bit. Queen Victoria's love of tartan dresses and fascination with Scotland. So Queen Victoria became the Queen when she was 18 years old and before that she had been living under strict rules of her mother and Sir Conroy. Her coronation wasn't immediately when she when she became a Queen, it was a year later as you, pro as you usually have a period of preparation for the coronation. So coronation is very rarely quite immediately after death of 
the last monarch and you becoming uh, and the person becoming a ruler. Queen Victoria was crowned in 28th of June in 1838, age 19. For her coronation, Victoria actually had two different outlets, not just one. <laughs> For the journey to Westminster Abbey, because people are outside, people are looking, they are they want to see her. She wore velvet crimson cloak and a white satin dress with gold embroidery. Once she got to Westminster Abbey, she changed into it a white linen gown which was decorated with lace and seen in this portrait portrait and this dress actually sets a really good example of Queen Victoria's plain clothes as a queen and I will talk more about this later and for her coronation she had a new crown made because she was a tiny woman so the crown that previous mourners had worn was way too big for her and way too heavy for her. So they made a new one just for her. Even though that one was still quite uncomfortable from what I had read. And obviously in this portrait you can see the white linen dress but also you might see something else and those are the coronation robes. So obviously it's added on during the ceremony so she doesn't arrive to the Abbey like that. Also here's a picture of Queen Victoria's crown that was made for her that doesn't exist as it is anymore. It has been taken apart like the jewels has been taken off but the frame is still in in the Tower of London I think. Next big fashion event in the Queen Victoria's life was her wedding and Queen Victoria's wedding dress I think probably most of you have heard a lot of things about her wedding dress and this is really interesting to me. So her wedding dress, it is iconic. A lot of you have probably heard that Queen Victoria was the one to wear a white wedding dress for the first time. Like she was the one. She was the first person to wear it. But that's not really true. Um, Queen Victoria wasn't even the first royal bride to wear a white wedding, wedding dress that was there were several others but typically brides wore their best dresses for the wedding and for royal brides this means dress decorated or made of gold or silver gold or and silver queen victoria wanted to present herself as first and foremost a bride and not a queen during her wedding day it had been quite recently when working class women had started to stay at home rather than working as well like men. And this was due to interest industrial revolution. And Queen Victoria wanted to appeal to her people as a bride and set a good, a good example as a wife. So there is all of these political things in the background. Women starting to stay at home rather than working and Queen Victoria was working woman, she was a queen, queen is a job, being a queen is a job, but she wanted to appeal to those people, upper middle class people who had wives that they stayed home. The white wedding dress was made of satin and it was decorated with handmade lace. Her dress was quite plain but fashionable, it had a small train so the dress would be a court appropriate as the court dress must have a train but Victoria wanted to keep this train as small as she could because she wanted to be she wanted to appear as a typical bride Victoria wore orange blossoms in her hair instead of a crown orange blossoms actually symbolize fertility and that is quite fitting because Queen Victoria went and had nine children so yeah I think those worked. With all of this, Queen Victoria managed to appear like any other bride that her contemporary media actually reported that she had no jewels, which wasn't true. And this became a pattern for media to downplay and remove details of her dress, which was act of 
which was political act as Queen Victoria wanted to be more approachable and not seem as high and mighty. To return back to the tools, uh, Queen Victoria wore a pearl necklace, diamond earrings that she got from Sultan of T Turkey and a sapphire brooch that she was given by Albert the day before her wedding. Queen Victoria actually designed her bridesmaids dresses <laughs> and those were quite plain as well and those plain dresses got a lot of critique because people had used to see a royal wedding and seen a lot of glitz and glamour and this wedding wasn't like that and people were criticizing it because it wasn't the typical royal glamorous wedding. One of the most interesting things that I learned is I know what Queen Victoria wore to her childbed when she gave birth to her first daughter. <laughs> it is amazing that they have actually recorded what she wore. I think it's really interesting because actually people don't really talk about what women did wore when they were given birth. It's a similar thing as history, like fashion history doesn't really talk about what women were when they had their periods. What women did wear to their childbirth. That's interesting. Interestingly, she did not wear stays. And this is surprising to me because I, first of all, didn't know women did wear stays during childbirth. The fashion not wearing stays during childbirth had just changed. So it was interesting that she didn't wear it because Queen Victoria was quite conservative what she wore. Instead of stays, Queen Victoria wore a chemise. A chemise is a undergarment, a underdress. And she actually wore the same chemise during all of her childbirths. So I would think it's kind of this like good luck token wearing the same chemise when giving birth. Now Queen Victoria was quite lucky because none of her children were stillborn. So I think it worked. <laughs> um, she also wore a dressing gown and a petticoat, which seems quite a lot of clothing to me, especially because petticoats at that time were quite big and quite heavy. However, I have never given birth, so I don't know what is comfortable to wear when giving birth and what is not. So, I honestly don't. Even after Queen Victoria's wedding, she was really fond of wearing white. There is a record that when she had attended church for the first time after giving a birth, she did wear white and a veil, which seems quite of excessive to me. Also, she wore white to christening of her first child, and that dress, at least in this painting, looks very similar to her wedding dress. And for her christening, she didn't wear a veil. So let's talk about Queen Victoria's style overall. So her style was very conservative and very upper middle class. Even though she did spend £6,000 per year for clothing, which was six times more than average gentleman gentlewoman at the time. That's a lot of money to look like a regular person. Uh, Queen Victoria was very dependent on her husband, Albert, and Albert was very controlling. And he actually had to approve all of Victoria's clothing choices, like everything. And in a way, Victoria dressed more for the politics than self-expression. And clearly all of her clothing decisions wasn't made by her, but... Albert when he was alive, which I think it's sounds quite toxic to me. For the opening of the Great Exhibition of 1851, Victoria wore this pale pink dress, or I would say cream colour dress. It's very hard to see because colours do fade over the time a little bit. And the dress is decorated with lace and bows and it has quite a lot of decorations and it is made of patterned fabric. In the painting of the opening of the Great Exhibition, it looks like Queen Victoria is wearing a pink dress. 
And that Pinterest in the painting, it doesn't look like it has much decorations at all. When I found that the surviving dress still exists, the dress that Queen Victoria actually bought to the Great Exhibition opening of it, I was shocked because it is painted and it looks very different in the paintings. And at first I actually thought that this was to simplify the dress and because it is Queen Victoria is quite a small bit of this huge painting so I thought it would just to simplify the painting to make it easier so to make it less confusing and less cluttered I'd say but when I heard that it was typical for media to downplay Victoria's dresses, it really makes sense because this is a really good example of that in mainstream media <laughs> in the time and paint even in paintings make it less decorated and be more down to earth than it actually is. So this is a great example that we can really trust to the paintings, we can really know if it's that that is the dress that the person actually wore because there is artistic license and yeah people don't really think about it but there is we can't really trust even paintings when we look at fashion history i have a whole video talking about crinolines and in that one i mentioned a little bit of queen victoria and her reaction to the crinolines but now I'm going to talk about it more. In 1856, crinolines became in fashion. And crinolines became a thing then. They were in invented then. Uh, crinoline is a petticoat made of steel hoops that would give volume to the skirt. Before crinoline, women did layer a lot of petticoats which were heavy and expensive. Factory made crinolines were cheaper and they gave more freedom to move, even though they were a little bit dangerous being glued to stuff and so on. Also, crinolines were critiqued for being too flimsy and exposing private parts too easily. Queen Victoria definitely wasn't a fan of crinolines. She even wrote an open letter for the ladies of England in 1856 where she warned women not to wear crinolines as they are dangerous and immoral however in summer of 1859 queen victoria gave in to the crinolines it was a heat wave and it was really hot so she decided to start to try to wear a crinoline to not to have layers of layers of petticoats because obviously having layers and layers of fabric is much more harder than wearing a case crinoline and just a few layers of fabric. She finally got used to the idea of wearing them and started then gave up. And this shows us that Queen Victoria wasn't the most fashion forward person. Uh, it took her for, it took her for a few years to even start wearing crinolines, so she wasn't the one following the fashion immediately and making fashion, you know. Also during the Regency era and during the Victorian time, as Queen Victoria did grow up during Regency era, that fashion was kind of not a good thing to be interested in. It was Seeing interest on fashion was seen as bad and un bad and feminine thing, and that was something that Queen Victoria didn't really want to be. In 1861, Queen Victoria's husband Albert died. This was a terrible blow to Victoria, who was devastated of her husband dying so young. After Albert's death, she was dressed in the morning clothes, as one does. And usually during Victorian era, women did wear morning clothes for a year. That means wearing black for a year. And then after the morning official morning period ended, women would start to wear more color and they would first introduce purple and lilac on their wardrobe and then gradually start wearing other colors as well. 
However, Queen Victoria decided after this one year mourning period that she would always wear black. She would always be mourning. And this decision to wear black for the rest of her life actually became her brand. Like for years people thought of Queen Victoria as this little old lady dressed in black. Because that what she really was. That's the persona that she expressed. That's the image that she wanted people to see. And this decision to wear black for the rest of her life actually was the point that Victoria stopped following fashion. And this is the point that she created her own style of her own black dress. Her gowns were lightly boned and they had huge pockets because Victoria loved comfort. Victoria really appreciated her dressmakers and for the most of the time she usually used the one person, like the same person for each stuff. For example, um, she used the same embroiderer and she even had a portrait made of her, which is really interesting. She had good relationship with her staff most of the time and it's most of Queen Victoria's dresses after this used the same bodice pattern which had a square neckline and this was for that she didn't have to go through with all of the fittings so it would be easier and quicker to just make one, make a new one because it will always fit. She would usually wear a white lace cap and a locket with pictures of her already deceased children with her dress. Also she wore morning jewelry that had a look of Albert's hair and morning jewelry was something truly a Victorian era thing. There are hundreds of examples of Victorian, Victorian morning jewelry that had a component of the person's hair in it. But yeah, Victoria did have a look of Albert's hair in her morning jewelry. In 1897 was Victoria's Diamond Jubilee and she was now the longest reigning monarch in England and she had ruled England for 60 years. For the celebrations they did have a parade, obviously. And for this parade Queen Victoria wore a black gown, obviously, and her black gown had a silver panels and she had a cape that was embroidered with silver sequins. Also she wore pearl earrings, a diamond necklace that she had gotten for a present from her children, and surprisingly she did not wear a crown even though this was her celebration of her being queen for six, 60 years and she didn't wear a crown which i think it's kind of weird but yeah she wore a bonnet instead of a crown and people actually said she looked like an old lady because yeah and that makes re that really makes sense because she does look like an old lady in these photographs and this was done on purpose again. For her whole life, Queen Victoria had cultivated a, an image of herself as a normal person, as a wife, as a mother, as a grandmother, as a widow, as just a person. And that wasn't something that people of England were used to before her. So Queen Victoria did change the monarchy quite a bit the way she presented herself. And this, I think, is really seen how British monarchs are seen today, what they wear today. I think Queen Victoria had an enormous effect on that. Some people think that this image of a royal as a normal person might have saved the British monarchy, as monarchy wasn't as strong after the French Revolution, which had happened in not that long ago. Interestingly, what Queen Victoria wore to parade isn't the image that we have really seen. 
it was later, a few days later after the parade and the official celebrations that a official Diamond Jubilee portrait was taken of Queen Victoria. For this photograph, she was wearing the same dress as in the Jubilee. In the photograph, she's wearing a small crown with a lace veil, and this lace veil was the same one that she got married in. And this photograph's got a lot of critique because it is quite a lot of, it has quite a lot of retouching. So Queen Victoria was guilty of Photoshop, and what they did really was to make Queen Victoria's double chin a little bit smaller and take her waist in and her skin was smooth and that was really pretty because people thought she looked like a wax doll in the photograph rather than a real person. It was only four years later that Queen Victoria passed and there isn't really much to say about what she was wearing during those times because she was mostly at home in Osborne before she died and she was quite immobile so she didn't really see or do stuff. I hope you enjoyed this video of looking at Queen Victoria and how she impacted on fashion and how she dressed. And give it a like if you liked and maybe follow me if you liked. And you can follow me on Instagram, which is Purit Corset. And yeah. Thank you for watching. Bye.